Just a minute here. So people were lucky. You don't have to be up here. It's not happening. It's, you're safe. But I do have all kinds of things for you to wear and or play and or whatever. Good to be in church today. We're going to start with praising the Lord with a little Hosanna. And then uh, we'll talk about what we're going to do today. Praise our joy and our sorrow, Lord, to sing to you, to, to make a joyful noise, Father, to strengthen each other, to love each other, to hear from your word those things that might help us move forward in life a little bit better. And so, Father, be with each and every one of us now. May a blessing be upon each person sitting here and those that they love. And we'll thank you in the precious name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. And uh, before we get going a little bit here, uh, we have a lot of people to pray for. There's more that's on here. June couldn't make it to a baptism. She couldn't get in a plane. She's still sick. I don't know what's going on there. And Raymond Camo is probably in the last couple of days of his life. He's really slowed right down. I talked to Brian, his brother, who's here. Um, Noah, who was taken by air ambulance to uh, IWK, has, they finally decided, a partial bowel blockage on one side. Who, who has this lock? A partial bowel blockage on one side of the bowel and an inward hernia and a muscle, and a stomach muscle, pushing on the other side. And so he was throwing everything up because it wasn't getting down. He was four months old and he's only eight pounds. Four months, eight pounds, right? And so hopefully tomorrow morning he'll have the operation that will be taken care of. And because all our nutrients are taken into in all in our intestines, right? In our bowels, that's where all the nutrients come into our body. And uh, so hopefully he'll start to put some weight on. 
Uh, that would be great. Rana, of course, she fell and broke her pelvis in six places, and she's in somewhat of a palliative care, but she's, boy, she just looks small and, and shrunken up a bit. Um, Joan Cunningham's daughter, Cheyenne, had her surgery yesterday, the day before. I was talking to someone, to, and hopefully they got all the cancer out. They're going to remove the cancer from behind her eye. Uh, Francie Spear fell in her house, and uh, oh! <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> That's yet to. Um, and uh, Jack Carrier's still in the hospital. They're still trying to get rid of the infection in his lungs. And so it's been a week now, right? And so, but that's a good place for him to be until they can get rid of all of that stuff. And there's, so there are other sicknesses out there that we'll pray for later on. If we don't have your birthday, Brian has a. a uh, the uh, clipboard back there, and he wants to write it down. We, need, we don't need to know the year. We can guess that. <laughs> no. I'm the, you, I don't know the difference between a 16 year old and a 22 year old now. I can, they just all look like young people. But we want the date so we can. <laughs> we want the date of your birthday so we can sing uh, along. And, uh, and so. We're going to sing Tissel Sweet to trust in Jesus. I'm going to take this down a notch so I don't have to stand in a chair. There you go. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise and to know the same Lord. Singing and and your English is not so great. 
we, uh, we say watermelon, watermelon. But we don't say it out loud. You just go. <laughs> and everyone will think you're singing along and you're doing fabulous. It's great to have you. It's great to have you. Oh. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never failed me. All my days I've been there. surgery tomorrow morning to clear the blockage in his bowel and the, in that uh, uh, muscle hernia so that he might at four months be more than eight pounds which is tiny all of our babies were 10 pounds six or 10 pounds eight or something so I can't imagine eight, eight, eight pounds at four months old right and I, I know that you have a prayer and uh, and we're going to talk about that later on but God wants you to lift all of your prayers to Him, not just the big, bulky ones, but the small ones as well. If there are little things bothering you, He wants to hear it. If you're going on trips, He wants to hear it. If you're, if you're having difficulty at work or somewhere, He wants to hear about these things. And so I want you to prepare your hearts to lift that. We're going to sing a beautiful song by Amy Grant. Thy word is a lamp 
unto your feet. If you're in this fancy electronic age, I can get to it, right?
When we truly see how deep our weakness goes, His strength in us begins, where ours comes to an end, and He hears our humble cry and proves us. people suffering financially or spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, perhaps in their relationships. And I, I don't know exactly where the problem may be, but you do, Father. And so, Lord, we give you permission. If there are strongholds, if there are barriers, if there is something that keeping you from reaching in and touching us in a deep and intimate way, we give you permission to tear them down, Lord. Flow into us with your healing power. Flow into us with your strength and your wisdom. We lift little Noah up to you today, Lord, that this surgery tomorrow will be successful. We pray for the doctors and the nurses. We pray for the technicians. We pray for the orderlies, we pray for the janitors, we pray for anyone who would be involved in bringing this child into a better life from where he is right now. We pray for Carolyn, our, our cook, as she deals with the soon to be departed brother Raymond, who's losing his fight with cancer. We pray, Lord, and lift up to you, Jack, this morning, a week in a hospital, still trying to get rid of that, that pneumonia in his lungs, Lord. We ask for clear lungs, that you could sweep in and do that. We pray for those who are dealing with cancer, those who've had operations already, those who are sick, those who are struggling, Lord, in whatever way. But you know, Father, you have told us that you are all seeing, all hearing, all knowing, all 
powerful and mutable, Lord. And then you're willing to take care of us. And we know that you can because you are the God of everything that we see and hear and smell and taste and touch and experience. And if that is true, and it is, you can do anything that you want as we lift our prayers to you. And I believe, Lord, with every fiber of my being, is that we lift our, our prayers, Lord, that the, that the power, the power comes down from the very gates of heaven and the blessings will flow back upon us. We pray for June, who couldn't make a flight this weekend, who's sick with a virus of some sort. We pray a, a quick healing for her, Lord. Father, I know in each and every mind there's someone they're thinking about be it a family member, a friend, a stranger who needs your touch, your healing touch, your love, Lord. And so I ask that you reach out there, those who are at home listening to this, those who could not be here today for various reasons, Lord, that they would know that they are loved and desired and wanted the doors open, and we want them with us. And so, Father, Touch our lives and touch them deeply. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, I'm going to talk about, uh, I put on the Facebook a picture of a, a big tree that fell in a house. Because we talk about the trees and the obstacles in, in life. And when I did that, I was thinking about Hurricane Juan. And I've told you before, right? Hurricane Juan came through Dartmouth right up our backyard, took the trees out, took, not, people had trees in their houses and all this other stuff. And I, I, the only bright side of that, and it shouldn't be, I, I've since repented for my thoughts. But there was the man with a little red sports car. And he would drive by the house and he'd look at me and he'd go, rum, 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 with his sports car and he'd drive away with his fancy car. He did that almost every day on the way to work. And when Hurricane Juan came through, a huge oak tree chopped his car in half. Go in half. There were two parts to the car. He wasn't beeping and roaring his horn at me anymore. And I did take the light momentarily that his car was smashed. We need to rely on God. It's the most important strategy that each and every one of us will ever have. Trusting in the Lord with our life and with our soul is the foundation of who we are as followers of Yeshua. When the obstacles come to us, that is when the rubber meets the road. That's when the obstacles are ahead of us. In 1962, Victor Mildred Gorzell conducted a study of things that people thought were going to happen in their lives. They did a study of famous people first. 413 of them. Brilliant scholars, brilliant scientists, and they wanted to know what made them strong. 392 of them, it, found, it was discovered, had suffered a huge obstacle in their life that they had to overcome. And in overcoming that obstacle, they became strong and powerful and were able to do a lot of things. Now, Friday morning, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm sleeping, I'm in my happy place, right? And then the world fell apart. Now, we had two children upstairs, right? One 22 and one, how old is she now? 39. They didn't hear a thing, because I know they didn't want to come down and see what was going on, right? I thought Lois tripped, got up in the night, tripped and fell or something, I don't know what it was. It was a massive thud, and I got up, and we were looking around, and then Lois went over to the sewing room at the back, and I went beside her. And we had back there a pantry of bottles and boxes and flowers and 
all kinds of things. Five tiers high, about four feet wide and two and a half feet deep. Been there five years. Two small pieces of plastic shattered somehow at the front, just enough to lean it forward. And at the strike of two, it came down. It cleared off half the Lois's Lois sewing table. It sheared off the corner of her serger. Clean off. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> Bottles on the... It was horrible. Horrible. Uh, tomatoes and oil, right? Broke. Broke. You know, chilies broke. Coffee swimming in there were broke. And uh, I had a flashback. I tried to help Lois right away, but I was, I was held back by a flashback. Right? I couldn't jump in there right away. And I remember going on a minesweeper. And we were going out to sea. We are going down the coast. And a minesweeper has got a round bottom, right? So we were doing this. And this minesweeper. And we hit a wave. And every glass, ketchup, mustard, HP sauce, Worcestershire sauce, vinegar, soy sauce. All came crashing down on the deck, and it was just 30 by 30 foot slurry of just, yeah, oh, I know, we were taking turns one at a time, but <laughs> scoop it up. And anyway, Lois wears shoes, and that's your indoor shoes and outdoor shoes, and my shoes are all in the back. And so, glasses everywhere, and I couldn't go out there because my shoes were underneath everything. And so, she was starting to clean up, and I brought garbage bags and towels and paper towels, and we did the best. That we could and then we decided to go back to bed with our hearts pounding from everything that was going on and uh, sweating uh, we lied down the next morning we had to go to Chris Ben's sis first thing in the morning and uh, we bought new shelves and other things that we needed and then started the long process of putting things back together again and trying to fix things it was uh, it was a very interesting time. And sometimes I think when we're complacent that God will do things. Now, I don't think God did this on purpose, right? But I remember being in boot camp when I was in the Navy. And the sergeant was coming down inspecting everyone. You're standing at attention. Hopefully everything is shiny, creased enough. And I had a little bit of dust. I never saw the dust. But the sergeant thought there was dust in my locker. And he said, here, let's shake the dust out. And everything was folded, shined, whatever. Everywhere I had to do it all over again. I really liked that guy. <laughs> Not. But it's almost like things were going so well in our lives and our ministries. And, and things were just coming along. And God said, well, maybe just, boof. There goes the shelves with everything. Let's see how you handle this one. This obstacle, this tree coming down in your back porch almost. Psalm 119 verse 105 says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Now this was one of many obstacles that all of us have faced in life in the great scheme of life. It was a pain in the rear end and it's almost straight and clean whatever up. Um, but we would overcome this and we will move on to the next obstacle, the next problem, whatever that might be. And so how do you overcome these obstacles in life? Because I was, I, in, I was thinking about what am I going to preach on today? And then God said, so, okay, I'm preaching on whatever you did there. Uh, now, perhaps your redwood is not five shelves loaded with glass and powders and everything else. Maybe it's something else that might happen crashing at 2 o'clock in the morning, right? Perhaps... Uh, it's in your relationship difficulties, minefield of, of struggles and spiritual struggles and financial or other emergencies. These things happen, right? And I, I'm sure they happen to you. I remember one day when I had my, the one kidney stones were moving, it was cutting me in half. And I was crying and doing all kinds of weird things. And uh, we got to the ambulance and I said, give me something. And I'm allergic to morphine. And they said on the ambulance, all we have is morphine. Get in and we'll take you to the hospital. I said, if you're not going to give me a painkiller, I'll walk to the hospital. I'm not paying 250 bucks just to look at your smiling face on the way to the hospital. 
But sometimes these things happen to us. The first thing we need to do is overcome our obstacles in our prayer life. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 and 19 says this, Pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the Spirit of God. The Bible commands us to pray without ceasing, to always have one eye on God and one eye on the life around us. Our constant communication with God is something that will keep us connected to what the Lord wants for us. Now remember, I've talked to you before about the wide road that leads to the broad gate that leads to, to hell, right? And the narrow road that leads to the small gate that leads to heaven. They're the same road. There's just a yellow line down the middle. And it's so easy to step from one onto the other. You need to have your eye on the Lord as you're walking so you won't wander off the road. God tells us to let all our requests be known to Him. He cares about you. Don't be afraid to lift to Him the things that you're going through. It's likely that He already knows. But sometimes we think we can keep secrets from the God of the universe. You cannot. When facing obstacles, whatever they may be, it's indispensable for us to stay in contact with God. I talk to God. You can talk to God at a stoplight in the lineup at the grocery store or Timmy's or wherever else. You have all kinds of opportunities to stay in contact with the Lord. And I try the best that I can to do that. One of the ways in which we can avoid or get by or get over or get through the obstacles in our life is to destroy speculations. Destroy speculations. What am I trying to say here? It's a fancy way of saying we need to reject the negative or hurtful thoughts that come to our mind. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 says this. We are destroying speculations in every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. So many people think that when things are happening to them that they're going to happen. They're going to happen. I talked to a lot of people who are borrowing from the future, and I said, I know you're upset, and we'll pray with you or cry with you, and that's fine, but don't start to decide what's going on in the future. Don't, don't try to answer questions that haven't been asked yet. Don't look into that, because so much of what you think will happen never happens. In fact, they did a study, and they found out that 91.4% of what you think will happen in any given situation Never does. It never does. Only about 8.6%. Uh, and you can make yourself ill. You can make yourself sick by worrying what could happen. And for young Noah, it was pretty well the, the same way. They thought, oh, it could be cancer. It could be this. It could be a tumor. It could be... And, and people are getting upset. All kinds of people are getting upset about what they never... They didn't know. And we can do the same thing, right? I know when I talked to my sister who had both breasts taken off in, in her cancer, and my sister had a kidney worked on, she had cancer there, my mother had breast cancer, among other things, and had some spots in her lungs. We've done a lot of talking, and they would tell me that even five years later, that, that Heather, my sister, would feel a twinge in her chest and think the cancer's back. The cancer's back. Right? And she start to panic a little bit. But you shouldn't do that, right? You shouldn't look to the future. You shouldn't borrow trouble from the future, right? We need to destroy our speculations. We need to destroy our thoughts about what might happen since most of it never, ever does. As followers of Yeshua, we're called to fill our minds with true and godly things. We should give Wait to what God would say to us and not every feeling that comes over us. Tearing down strongholds and eliminating negative thoughts and patterns will help us create a more positive Christ-like life to live for ourselves. It will strengthen us through trials and through tribulations and when we have troubles with our faith journey. 
The one thing that we do need to do if we want to overcome these obstacles in our lives that come to us is choose, choose faith over fear. Right? Because God has given us all the ability to choose. Remember Adam and Chava, Adam and Eve, right? And they went to the tree in the center of the garden of knowledge of good and evil, and we call it the tree of choice. They had a choice to do what God wanted them to do, or they had a choice to disobey God, which they did. And even though we have a choice today because of that, we also have evil in the world. You need to make a choice. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, but of power and of love and of discipline and of knowledge as well. God's not giving you that spirit of weakness. He's given you a strength that he can provide to you. And you need to grab on to that. You need to choose your faith over fear in what might be happening in your life. We could have had a fear on Friday morning at 2 o'clock that what's going to happen and this, everything's going to soak into the wood and we won't, we'll have to now replace the sewing machine. And, you know, so many things could happen. We could decide... Or we could just have faith that God would take care of this. So, so we went to bed. We went to bed. And we got up in the morning with our faith and took a fresh look at that whole disaster in the back of the house and just slowly picked it apart, slowly. And it's working fine. The Bible says that God's perfect love for us has cast out our fear. We need to abstain from sin if we want to deal with the obstacles in our lives. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 22. Abstain from every evil form. From every form of evil. And we know that when we have a new body, when we declare with our mouth that, that Yeshua is Lord, when we believe in our heart that God the Father sent him to live, to suffer, to die, at the moment he said those words, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, took our sins upon him. My God, my God, why have you forsaken us? He, he had his sins. Our sins were upon him. God turned his face from him. And he took them to, to the ground and left them there for us. And when that happened, we were given a new nature, a new love, a new journey. But that old nature is still clinging on to us. Like the smoke from a campfire. You can't quite get rid of that Smell that wood burning smell for a long time. It affects everything that you wear. James says that sin comes from our own evil desires, and that's a sobering thought. We could have said and thought and did things two o'clock in the morning, Friday morning, that were sinful in our thoughts. And you think, we didn't, we didn't actually do anything, but what did God, what did Jesus say? I did not come to fulfill the law, I didn't, or abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And so if you are mad at someone, that's the same as murdering them. And if you look at another woman twice in the same day, at the same time on purpose, that's the same as committing adultery. Your mind can take you to sinful places. And we could have said and gone to a lot of places that night. We need to be careful and abstain from sin in our lives. And then we need to trust God completely. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Don't lean on what you think is right or wrong, good or bad, false or true. Don't do that. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. God gave us what is best for us, and we need to learn to be happy with that. Some of us are not happy with our jobs. Some of us are not happy with our life in different ways or the way our lives are going, but we need to find a happiness in that, and we can do that with God. Someone's got to fly the planes, and someone's got to pick up the garbage. Someone's got to ring your groceries through at the grocery store. Someone has to be a doctor. Whatever you do, do it and be proud. And don't worry about what's going on. Don't worry about thinking of a different plan for your life. 
we used to tell our kids, and we still do, when they, when uh, when Isaac came home with a sixty, uh, barely passed, we would say, "Did you do your best on this one?" Because some he didn't, and he said, "Yes, on this one I did my best. I did whatever I could. I studied. I, whatever. I said then sixty is good enough for us. If you did your very best, it's good enough for us. And if we do our very best." And whatever our job is, whatever the plans that, that God has for us, then God is happy with each and every one of us. We need to overcome. We need to streak our strength and wisdom from God. Second Corinthians says this. And he has said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties. For Christ's sake, for when I am weak, I am strong. Sometimes people say things and do things that they ought not to do in their weakness. Remember no, uh, Pharaoh? Ramses II, God hardened his heart. God did not make him a bad person. He was already a bad person. God made him more of the person that he is, so he was worse. In the pandemic, some people were nasty. Bite your head off for no reason at all. And someone would say, it's just the pandemic. It's just people getting upset with that. And I would say, no, absolutely not. It's, no, it's not. The pandemic's just giving them a reason to be who they really are on the inside. Sometimes you can hold things back. Sometimes you can, you can put a fence up, right? A barrier. You can keep yourself private, your thoughts and your actions. But when something happens to crack away at that, who you are comes out. Be careful that who you are is not who you should be and that it doesn't come out. Strength and wisdom. Come from God, not to let that happen. <clears throat> Jeremiah 29 and 11 says this. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity, to give you a future and a hope. God has a plan for you. God's ways are always better than our ways. But if we're going to overcome obstacles, we need to have trust in God. We need to have a faith. We need to have a belief. Now, I don't like to use and abuse that one account, but I've told you before of the young lady in a small church near the side of a, um, a sugarcane field in Kamuani, Cuba. And she couldn't have a baby. They'd been trying and trying and trying. And she wanted prayer. And so we got the oil out, we anointed her, we laid hands on her, we prayed for her. Half the church that was in there prayed for her. And I ran into her after the service, walking on a dirt road, heading out, and I said, what are you going to name your baby? And she said, let's find out if there's going to be a baby first, then we'll worry about the name. And what does that tell you? What it tells me is that she had no faith in the prayer. She had no faith in the process. She had no faith in God's plan. She had no real faith and trust in God himself. She's going to see what happens for herself before she decides anything else. And the same can happen to you. The same thing. You want to be prayed for, we'll pray for you. You want to be anointed, we'll anoint you. If you have issues, we'll pray and move forward. We'll do different things. But you have to trust in God's plan for your life. You have to trust in God's power and his wisdom for your life. And things will more likely happen for you. But when you discard it as soon as you're prayed for, then you were not prayed for. They were just words. It might as well have been Charlie Brown's teacher, right? Wow, 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 wow. It's true. It's true. Surround yourself with others who will support and encourage you. Find someone you can talk to. Find someone you can share your secrets with who will keep them to themselves and not share them with the rest of the community. 
you take the time to dig deep, you'll discover that these people are struggling just as much as you, perhaps, but maybe in different ways. And what do we need to remember before we pray? Uh, we're going to sing a beautiful song. We do it over and over and over again. I love it. You are what? You are a child of God. You are a daughter of the King. You are a son of the Lord. We are a part of God's family. We are going to have struggles. We are going to have obstacles. We are going to have trees fall down in front of us or on our houses or on our cars or wherever else. We're going to have difficulties. That's life. God did not say that when you gave your life to me that life would be a bed of roses. No. God said that when the things come upon you, the trials and the temptations and, and the issues and the obstacles, I will walk with you through them to put you back on the mountain top. You are a child of God. You are a daughter of the King, a son of the Lord. We are a faith family, all of us. And I, I've told you before, in a perfect church, it happens. No churches are perfect, right? No one's perfect. No one's good. No, not one. Everyone sins and falls short of God's glorious standard. Not an excuse to do that. But a perfect faith family, if we could move towards that, is if someone calls you at 2 o'clock in the morning. Let's say it was really bad. What would you do if I called you at 2 o'clock in the morning and I said, we just had a disaster, everything fell off and broken and all that. And we really need help. Can you come over? If I called you, the, the only thing you should say to me is, what do you need? I'll be right there. I'll bring a shovel. I'll bring garbage bags. I'll bring hands. I'll bring whatever. Right? You don't say, can, we, can this wait till morning? Or can we do something else? No. And I would, I would put that out for each and every one of you. We are going to have obstacles in our lives, and sometimes they're going to happen during the day, and sometimes they're going to happen during the night. And if we are a faith family, when someone calls you in the middle of the night, the only thing that should come out of your mouth is, what can I bring? I'll be right there. That's how we love each other. That's how we strengthen each other. That's how we show our love for each other. That's how we help each other overcome the obstacles in our lives. We're going to sing a beautiful song now. Who? Who am I? Right? Who you say I am. And then we'll have a prayer. Who you say I am. And the verses of the song go on to tell us that you are a child of God. A child of God. Yeah. 
person who's come out here today, Lord. And again, I ask a blessing upon their life and those whom they love. Father, guide us with your plan. Strengthen us with your power. Give us insight. Give us the faith and the belief that we need to overcome the obstacles in our lives. When trees fall down and crush things that we love, Give us what we need to overcome. Give us the steps to take, the power to take, the faith family to include, Lord, as we overcome these obstacles, whatever they happen to be. I thank you, Father, for these people. May they leave here with what you have said to them, what your spirit has said to them, and not my words or my illustrations, Lord, but Holy Spirit, what you have driven into their minds and their hearts, and their souls. And we will love you for that. May God be with you, love you, guide you, hold you, till we're able to gather again. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Have